Hey everyone, Parallel here, and welcome to Star Trek Online. Well, the summer event for 2017 is in full swing. Hopefully you've all been enjoying it and uh, having some success farming up your lol nuts and your vouchers for your uh, free event ship. This is just going to be a little bit of a laid-back video. Now that everyone's had some time to farm up some lol nuts, I thought I'd go ahead and check out the summer event store and take a look at all of the new cosmetics and goodies that are available this year. And I also thought I would do a run of the biathlon event. I was actually planning to do a full video on all of the little mini games that you can do during the summer, but uh, frankly, all of them are almost exactly the same as last year. The biathlon is the only new event this year. So I thought I'd go ahead and do a run of that and show everyone there. I'd maybe give a few tips. It's really pretty straightforward, but there are a couple things you can watch out for. All right, so first thing here, Let's take a look at the new things in the summer event store. Now, uh, now if anyone's wondering, um, as far as farming up uh, lol knots, I think my recommendation would be is that the Horgon Hunt, which is actually going on right now, is the best option, honestly. It is very fast to complete. If you have a uh, high quality floater, you can complete it in about three minutes. And you can get easily it gives you about a hundred lol nuts which is really good per time unit invested so as far as uh, time versus reward it is probably the best event in fact what really makes it worthwhile um, is if you have alts i would highly recommend if you have a uh, you can actually do this if you do it very well and you have a good path you can actually complete this on five alts during the 15 minute event so um in theory, you could actually get 500 lol knots in the 15-minute event if you do it just right. And if you all have fast floaters. If you have like medium floaters and only a couple alts, it's still worth running it. You can easily get three runs in, even on a slow floater. So, and that's still pretty good time, uh, you know, pretty good lol nuts per time uh, invested. So, that'd be my, my recommendation. Uh, I believe I actually have a previous video from last year where I did do a uh, little bit of a guide on the Horgon Hunt, so you could check that out if you would like. But let's take a look at the new cosmetics this year. There are quite a few new things, and a few of them are actually from the biathlon event, so I'll go ahead and show you those. Uh, the biathlon event, if you participate uh, and actually place for second or third, will unlock a uh, new type of floater and power board in your event store. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my summer event store. Um, on this character, I have placed, I think second was the best. Yeah, I've only placed second on this character. It is unfortunately per character, uh, the unlock that you get for these items. Um, so if you complete the biathlon event, you get second, it will actually unlock the bronze and the silver. If you get first place, then you also get the gold. You'll actually see you'll get an accolade uh, once you complete it the first time that unlocks these items in the store. So you can get the uh, silver one or the bronze one for second place. Um, if you only get third place, you can only get the bronze will unlock. Um, and yes, there's also a floater. I'm actually pretty tempted to pick up the silver floater. I thought it might look cool on this character. Um, in fact, I'll go ahead and do that now. Sure, why not? All right, there we go. So we'll check that out here. So again, you need to actually complete the biathlon and uh, place first, second, or third to unlock these floaters. And as soon as that refreshes, we'll take a look at that. Um, I'm going to head down to the beach here and show another one of the new items in the store. Let's head over here into a sandy area. Um, one of the other new items you can get is this little uh, build a sandcastle ground device. So let me show you where that is. Um, there are the, man, this summer event store is getting quite stocked up of items now with all the new items stacking up each year, plus all the new kit modules and all the new training manuals. It is being <laughs> becoming quite a list to scroll through here. So here's the Sandcastle. It is a ground device. It's only 100 lol nuts, very easy to farm up. Um, so I'll go ahead and show that here. And also there are new uh, Caracals, uh, four new varieties of Caracals. Um, I'll probably pick one of these up as well. These are also only 100. And let me think, was there anything else new? You've got your Sandcastle, you've got your um, 
the new floater and the new power board if you place in the biathlon and you've got the new um yeah the new caracals anything oh yes the new swimwear you've got your uh the new rash guard swimwear and i'm also i'll pick one of these up and show these in the tailor as well um all the new swimwear i believe is up here yeah so you got your rash guard swimwear there's actually i think four different varieties and then there is also a faction specific variety so here i'm on my uh orion character so i you have the uh, kdf version the federation also has a federation uh version and then the romulan as well um, one thing i noticed on my other characters when i purchased these you they do actually recolor quite well um it's not obvious here. You, you might think well, some of these summer event items and also the winter event items, you can't really color the uh, outfits very well. Um, but these ones you can. So uh, be aware of that, that you can actually recolor it. So kind of, I'd say, pay more attention to the pattern that you want. I'm actually thinking this one actually looks really cool. So I'll probably pick up this one. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Pick up that one. And then there's also three. Oh, crap. Was that the mail? Well, that is not what I wanted. I just picked up the male one. Uh, let's go up here to the female one. Will that not work? It won't work. Ha <laughs> ha, so. <laughs> uh, so I'm an idiot. I just bought the wrong uh, gender. All right, so let's go back here and actually get the correct one. Well, that was a nice waste of lol nuts. Um, let's do that. And then the female version of the board shorts, you can get three different varieties. Again, these seem to color fairly well. Um, so you just look for the one that has the pattern that you're going to want. Um, probably the one that would match here. Probably the diagonal stripe one looks like it might match. Let's go for that. All right, so we'll check those out in the tailor. But first thing, I did want to show the sandcastle. Let's go ahead and do that. You don't actually have to equip it into your device slot. You can just use it right from your inventory. And there you go. There is your sandcastle. It lasts for about five seconds and then it goes away. Pretty much that's all there is to it. It almost looked like that one... I'm not sure what building that's supposed to be. It almost looked like that one, the building in the um, Zephyr and Cochran map. But uh, not sure on that. But that is the... That is the... Let's do it one more time here. It's about to refresh. Oh, it's random. Oh, okay. Cool. That makes it a little bit cooler. So it is actually random. A building comes up. Nice. All right, so there's the sandcastle. Let's take a look at this, um, the silver version of the floater. Ooh, it's actually very metallic. Okay. Otherwise, seems to have the same model. Just, uh, yeah, pretty much what you'd expect. I assume the gold one would just be a very metallic-looking gold, and then the bronze would be a bronze, of course. And one other thing we can look at here is I did want to buy one of the Caracals, so let's take a look at one of those. Where were the Caracals? So there are four new ones. You've got your Sardonyx Tigers. There, yeah, they're all those tiger striped versions. So you got the Sardonyx, Smoky, Amethyst, and Emerald. Hmm. Might go for either Smoky or Sardonyx here. Or maybe Amethyst. Who knows? Um, hmm. They did have screenshots of this in the blog, but I'm not actually remembering uh, what they were. I know one of them was... There was kind of a red, a green, a yellowish, and a purple, I believe. Hmm. I don't know which one I want. Well, I do know that the biathlon is going to be starting here soon. Let's see. What do I think? Maybe the emerald? Sure. They're only 100, might buy all four. The Horgon hunt is ended. Try again soon. 
All right, so here we go. Let's see what the Emerald Caracal looks like. Ooh, he is actually very bright green. Okay. <laughs> wow, okay. That was a very colorful one. But there you go. Get different colors of the Caracal. There's quite a few varieties of this now. If you wanted to get all of them, there'd be quite a collection. Um, now, I think the only other thing here, I will take a look at the cosmetics and the tailor. I don't think I have time now because the biathlon is about to begin, so I will do that right after the race is complete. We'll take a look at those. Um, anything else new in the store this year? Oops, that was the reputation store. Let's go back here. Now, the only thing is the um, all of the new, uh, you've got you know all the new ground kit modules which I actually, if you check out my previous video from last week, I just did a full review of these. Um, the Sandstorm Generator is, I mean, it seemed decent. It did uh, decent damage, but the the animation time and the cooldown time were quite long. So eh, I would say it's a decent module, but it's not really a must have. Um, my advice to anyone would be, before you do anything else, would be to get the um, Graviton Spike for tactical characters. That is far and away the best one. And also pick up now that you have training modules for the uh, Graviton Spike for all of your tactical bridge officers. Definitely pick up that as well. That would be Those would be the top priority over anything. Um, pick those up. But here is the Biathlon. You can actually see on the map, it actually starts over here by Quen's camp this time around. Um, as far as tips for this, um, I guess my first tip, well, the first thing is you're gonna need a the top level quality power board and the top level quality of the floater, because it is a biathlon, so you're gonna need both. But otherwise, it is pretty much a standard race. The whole thing that makes it a biathlon is the, um, oh, I didn't get the speed boost, is that you use the power board and the floater. That's kind of the, what makes it a biathlon. Try to take advantage of hitting your space bar at the top of the ramp. That will give you the nice uh, speed boost. That will help you keep up with the other race, or somehow I missed that one. And that person didn't, so they're all passing me now. There we go, got that speed boost. Now, this is it's pretty much a straightforward race. You can kind of see the path that I'm taking, but one thing you got to watch out for is the turn here. There is this turn right here. You almost don't want to get that speed boost because it will send you flying a little bit farther than what you want to be. And there you go. And then you turns into the floater race. And again, you're going to need the top quality floater or you're going to be left behind. You can still complete the race, um, but you, if you really want to place and unlock the you know bronze, silver, and gold skins, uh, yeah, you're definitely going to need the top quality here. Um, a lot of people have run this race a lot of times. You can see it is very close here. And this is like the other power board race where it's a little bit annoying that you have to um, actually claim the flag at the end. I've never liked how they did these races because it's very easy to go through all this effort. Uh, did I go through all this effort and then have someone else? Well, I got third place. Joy. Um, you go through all this effort and then you have to spam your key to even claim your flag. Quite annoying. Um, and you can see it's <laughs> it's just, I don't know, I never liked that part of it. It really should just be whoever crosses the line and you just, you know, then you place. They always have this weird, you have to claim it and you have to spam your key when you get down here and sometimes you won't get the, the you know, the one where you actually finished. But that is the race. Um, so that time you can see I got third. It was actually funny because uh, I did see I got the accolade for third. Uh, even though I previously got second on this character, um, I guess maybe you do want to place... You know, if you want all the accolades, you will want to place, you know, first, second, and third to get all three. All right, but that is it as far as the biathlon. Um, really just look out for that one turn. You can kind of see the path that the race took, right? It starts up here at Quen's camp. You go all through here as a power board race. And right when it comes to about here or so, that is when it uh, you take that sharp turn. That's the turn you got to watch out for. Um, you got to, you know, pull off the throttle and make that turn or else you're going to go flying. 
Um, and then right here is actually where that little ramp is, where you then convert over to a floater race, and then you follow, you know, kind of this path right here, and then you go up into the crater in the middle, and then claim your prize. So that's how the biathlon works. It's it's not too bad. I mean, just standard things. Just watch out for that one turn. Make sure you have the fastest floater and power board. Practice it a few times. The only other, I guess, trick, if you want to call it one, is something you can do is right before the race starts, uh, what you can do is actually search around for a less crowded channel. Um, it doesn't always work. Sometimes people flock to the less crowded channel just for the race as well. But if you're looking to minimize the amount of competition you have, uh, you could try that. Just switch to a low populated channel right before the race starts and then um, you know maybe you get less competition more of a chance to place um, yep so that is the bi biathlon let's go ahead and head back down here and to the tailor because there's a tailor down here but it's a pretty fun race i actually like the idea of a bi biathlon um, adds a little bit of spice to the regular power board race which you can actually do. There is still the regular power board races. You can do that. Oh, and what did I get for third place? Um, three tropical tags and 25 lalnut favors. Um, of course, the tropical tags are right here. These are the ones you can convert into the monkeys. Um, curious if, uh, if, uh, if I can show real quick where that NPC is. It's not, uh, it's over at the promenade, but, uh, Let's over here to the tailor and check out the new rash guard swimwear. Okay, so I did. Here's the female one. So I did actually eventually claim. Okay, and there's the rash guard female. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Can these be. It doesn't say bound to character. I might be able to put this over to my. Uh, send this over to my Talaxian alt. Um, yeah, I might actually end up doing that. But, okay, so unlocked those. Let's take a look at what they look like in the tailor. All right, so... Oh, do I have to go to separates? Is it here? There we go. All right, there we go. And you can see if it time, clips through the bikini bottom, so that's not good. So you're not going to want to do that. Artifacts. Yep, see the clipping there? <laughs> that's not good. But it, it does not clip with, of course, the shorts that you are supposed to use. But yeah, you can see it is actually very coloring friendly. So you can actually go through here, maybe make this, if you wanted to make it look more Klingon, you could uh, go with like a darkish red. What else we got here? Actually, I kind of like this one as a black. We'll leave that as black. Make the stripes like red. There we go. And then here. Oh, okay, so there's a, wow, four coloring areas too. So you can see there is actually pretty good coloring options oh that's why it's a palm there's a palm tree on the side that's what that is all right didn't even really notice that at first I can make that black too i guess sure now for the lower that's interesting that the lower is also is it connected it looks like it's actually connected to the top see how it chose uh, both colors hmm that's a little bit odd yeah. I could almost make this like a white or a gray. Well, that looks fine. We'll just leave it like that. But see, it is actually, so that's great. So it is actually nice and color friendly. Um, so you can choose, just choose the one that has the pattern that you're going to want and then color it how you like. Yeah, so not bad, not bad at all. There we go. All right.
right, so anything else we want to take a look at here? We've got the uh, Caracal, we've got the Sandcastle, we took a look at that. We've got the new, um, new floaters. I think that's pretty much the new stuff. I did say I would close out and show you guys where you can turn in these tags in case you are wondering. There's actually these tags, you can turn them in very close to actually where you turn in the bird eggs. Um, these are actually duty officer missions you can do. So if you do the site to site transport and head over to the promenade, Head on up here, and there are a couple of NPCs that will give you... This one over here is the uh, Rhysian bird egg, and also growing the birds into their mature versions. Or senior versions, I guess, is the the uh, very rare. And this guy over here is the monkey trainer, and this is where you do the monkey tags. So you just say, turn in the monkey tags, and then uh, how many do you need? Oh, I was going to say, it was not highlighted at first. So you need six, and I got three for that race. So two races per... I think you do get more the higher you place, because I think when I got second place, I actually got eight, I want to say. Um, and I'm not actually sure how many you get for if you just finish and not and not place. Uh, not sure, probably just one or two, honestly. So you want to complete the race quite a few times if you want to get yourself on it, your hands on one of these uh, monkeys. There are, you know, the three different colors. I'll go ahead and uh, begin that assignment. I believe it does take 24 hours. Yeah, I've got a couple of birds in the oven here. And then, um, yep, yeah. oh, just 20. So, yeah, 20 hours. Now, once that hatches, you can come back the next day and you can raise them further. So you just, uh, you know, if you get a blue, green, or a red, you can come here and raise them further uh, to the next stage. And you could, so that and each one of those stages takes another day. And each time you do that, it improves the quality of them by one rank. So they start out common, and then after a day, they'll go to uncommon, and then rare, and then very rare. So you're looking at a good four days of duty officer missions to actually get them up to the very rare um, status. So you can either choose to keep them as, you know, a non-combat pet, or you can choose to turn them in uh, for marks. You can do the same thing over here for birds. Um, I can't hatch another egg because I already have a, the duty officer uh, in the mission here in progress. But same thing here, you turn into one egg and you can turn it into a bird and it will hatch into one of the random varieties of birds. One thing I forgot to mention that's also really great about doing the Horgon hunt is that also provides you with eggs. You can actually, as you're going through and hunting for the Horgons, when you loot one, you have a random chance of getting a bird egg, which is pretty fantastic. So not only is it one of the best ways to get lolnots, but um, it's also one of the best ways to get uh, uh, bird eggs. And you can hatch them and then, you know, if any of them that you don't want to keep, at the end you can come over here and say trade in and you can... Um, uh, basically turn one of them in. So the senior sea spray here, you can turn in as for a uh, multiple choice mark package. I think I'll go ahead and do here. We got, uh, we've got two dust divers. Are these the tufted kind? No, no, no. These are the regular kind. So I'll turn in one of these dust divers. I don't need two of them. Um, the tufted kind does give you more. I believe this is the tufted and this is the regular dust diver. They give you a few more marks. Uh, the regular dust diver, I don't recall exactly how many it gives you. Um, but on this character, I think I need Terran marks. Yeah. So let's say I need some Terran marks and we'll do accept and it gives, I didn't even see I scrolled up 60. Okay. Um, I do know the tufted gives more. So there's a random chance when you hatch the egg, it will become one of the tufted varieties as opposed to the regular. Um, I believe it also gives a random chance each time you mature them one level. Uh, I could be wrong on that though. But it is a good way, I mean, since you're already doing the Horgon hunt for farming your lolnuts, it is a good way to get some extra marks on the side. Same thing with the monkeys, you can do the same thing here. You mature them and then at the end you can trade them in or you can just keep them as a non-combat pet. It's all up to you. 
But that's what you can do as far as the raising yourself some birds and the monkeys. And yeah, and that's the new biathlon event, and those are all the new cosmetics. Yeah, and I think that pretty much covers it for the 2017 event. I do like the new biathlon. It is actually pretty fun. It's a decent, uh, decent addition to the race. The only thing I don't like is uh, one thing they changed this year with the event is that by adding this biathlon event, they... Uh, changed the cycle of how the events work it used to be on a one hour cycle so you can go up here and you can see all of the um, events coming up for the next hour they changed it to a 90 minute cycle now so it's actually quite unfortunate because now the horgon hunt will only come once every 90 minutes instead of once every hour so that's uh that's a little bit unfortunate it makes it a little hard to schedule around when you want to you know do your runs but uh uh, I mean, what can you do? I, I I would like to see them cut out. There are some like uh, duplicate. I know there's multiple biathlons per that 90 minute cycle. I think that's why they did it. They just wanted to fit in more of the new version of the, the new uh, mini game. But uh, I don't like the 90 minute cycle, unfortunately. Um, just means less Horgon hunts. But, you know, it's not a big deal either way. Um, you know, it is it is what it is. Just schedule it out, set a timer. In fact, if you heard my timer go off earlier, that was a reminder to do the biathlon. So just set a timer and uh, and you're good to go. All right, guys, so that pretty much covers it. I just wanted to mention one last thing here before I sign out. I get the feeling that there is going to be a little bit of an unfortunate content drought here during over the summer. Um, just the way it is. I mean, last summer we had the whole, you know, temporal, uh, the temporal agent event, the recruitment event that was going on. It was the whole agents of yesterday was released during the summer. So that was a really active summer last year. But this year, you know, we just had season 13 not that long ago. And, uh, and now the summer event is out. So I don't see much else coming out on the horizon. I haven't even heard hints of anything like a, uh, you know, a featured episode or anything coming up here. So I think we're looking at a little bit of a content drought. I might be wrong. I might be pleasantly surprised, but just based on how things scheduled out this year, you know, the next season is a ways away. There's not really any big content patches rumored to be coming up. There's uh, yeah, not much going on. So I think we're definitely looking at a content drought for the next few months. Um, of course, it will be fun to check out the new ship once you know uh, once we complete our grind of the 1,000 uh, you know vouchers you need to complete the new ship project. So that'll be cool to check out. But otherwise, I don't see a whole lot new coming out in Star Trek Online. Um, so I am looking for ideas for videos, uh, as you know, some other topics and things that are coming out. I know Critica, uh, the closed beta for Critica uh, just closed or just ended. So um, I actually haven't seen the date, but Critica Online is another free to play MMO coming out that's from the uh, makers of Terra. I did actually play the uh, closed beta a little bit and it seemed decent. So I might check that out here coming up. Hopefully the open beta will start here shortly. It seemed to be in a pretty decent state where they could go into open beta pretty, pretty quickly. That's one thing. Um, I am also checking out, of course, the major hype going on right now in the MMO world is Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. The early access for that also just started, and the full release is coming out on the 20th, I believe. I am actually in the early access. I actually um, I haven't played Final Fantasy XIV in literally mm, three plus years how long ago did heaven's ward come out because i didn't actually even play heaven's ward so yeah i haven't played that in a really really long time but um i did come back to check out the early access having fun uh, leveling up a red mage uh, so i might check that out if anyone is interested in that of course there are tons and tons of youtubers out there already making lots of good videos on uh, final fantasy 14 has actually a pretty pretty great community as far as mmos go um but yeah, so those are some uh, videos I've been uh, uh, thinking about. Um, otherwise, if there's any other topics, you know, even for Star Trek Online guide videos or things that uh, you might be interested in, let me know in the comments down below. I certainly uh, would welcome your input. Um, but otherwise, it seems like it's going to be a little bit of a slow summer going forward here in Star Trek Online. So look forward to some other videos on various topics and also Star Trek Online. I'm not quitting the game or anything like that, not even close. I still uh, do enjoy the game, just... Um, just looking at a bit of a slow time here, but uh, it happens. 
All right, guys, but I do appreciate it. Uh, you know, enjoy the rest of the summer event. Uh, and don't farm too hard. Just, <laughs> yeah, just enjoy it. If you over farm, you're going to just, you're going to go crazy. And it's not really worth it. I mean, most of these cosmetics are, you know, they're just optional things. There's nothing critical to get. So just enjoy it. Log on a little bit, do a few mini games, and then uh, put it down for a while. Don't over farm it. That's my advice. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. Bye for now.